Hey guys, it's Classic. Welcome to this week's episode of Casual Talks, where I get on the pitch with your favorite people in the Rocket League community to find more about them. This week's episode features the expert and now beloved analyst, Gibbs. So let's start with the simplest, with the simplest uh, question of them all that I always start is when did you get into Rocket League? And in your case, I think you played Star. So yeah. when did ha that whole thing happen? When did it start? So I think what I saw was like on a PlayStation blog somewhere because I follow games pretty closely. Mm -hmm. So I um I saw a PlayStation blog for SARP like, hey, there's some weird soccer car game. And I'm always been interested in like weird sport games that are not necessarily real sports in video games. Mm -hmm. So it, it caught my eye pretty quick. So I bought it, I believe, on launch day. And then um, for the first year, year and a half, I was like uh, organizing tournaments for the North America scene. And then even a couple for the uh, European scene when that came out. It came out, like, I think it was, like, around six months after the North America uh, release. So I picked that up as well. And then, uh, yeah, just had some fun with it. You started as a player on Cosmic yep. Aftershock, right? Yep. And also, like, uh, so the way I got onto that was when the alpha was announced for, um, uh, for Rocket League, like, obviously, like, I wanted to be in it, like, right away. So I got in uh, early and... It was basically me going up against uh, Pie Man of Death, uh, also known as Gambit, mm -hmm. a lot, and uh, and Kronovi and Sad Jr. Those were like the three guys that I was like, oh crap, I got to play defense uh, versus these guys. And then Crow kind of saw that and asked me to join his team in case, because uh, some other European squad played against the devs. Okay. So Crow was trying to get that to happen for us. So he recruited me and said to try for that. And uh, that's how we became friends and started playing together. And then also the ranks in that were uh, private, but the devs told me it was like Crow was miles ahead of everyone, ranked uh, number one in the world. And then I was number two, miles ahead of everyone else. I was aware, you know, I've been watching for since a, you know, a long time. So I've seen the evolution of uh, Cosmic Aftershock into like Eye by Power and all that jazz. Um, how did your, I, I'd like to know more like about the transition from going to player to uh caster slash analyst and uh, yeah. the role you're currently in how did that go and you know how how did it go so i always knew that like i was definitely the worst on our team and like we never outright like said that mm -hmm. but i always knew that like eventually like if big money came in and we kind of knew that that the rlcs uh, was coming at some point so i always knew that i was probably going to be like all right guys move on without me at some point but then uh, my wife got pregnant anyway so at that point, I was like, I'm not going to have time to compete. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I didn't anyway, because I had a full-time job and all stuff, like mm -hmm. playing with these kids. It just didn't really work out. So actually, Crow and Sam were one of the first few people to know that my wife was pregnant. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I told them, like, hey, guys, like after the RLC Pro League, I'm going to be uh, uh, moving on, and I would love to coach you guys, you know, and, like, help out. Mm -hmm. So that's what we decided to do. Oh, and I didn't know you, you went into a coaching position. So I did it first, but then w when uh, the RLCS contacted me, then we kind of didn't do that because it would look weird it happened kind of very naturally you know you you had a kid then rlcs contacted you you know you were probably not gonna um, yeah like know. um it worked out because as soon as like i retired then rlcs is like well that that's perfect we need like an expert on the desk that would have a lot of respect like from the community mm -hmm. so they contacted me shortly after i retired and were like hey do you want to do this and i was like absolutely so so that's great timing actually that's fantastic yeah, it worked out it worked. I, I, you know, it worked out pretty well. It worked. Out, it worked out pretty. Yeah, well. <laughs> it, like it was very strange because Golden Boy, like I was on Skype, I, like I was at my uh, day job, mm -hmm. and he's like, "Do you want to cast for the RLCS?" And like, I didn't necessarily want to cast at that point. Okay. Uh, but I wasn't gonna say no. Like I said yes, and then we, we got a phone call, and we figured out that desk would probably be th the best spot for me, mm -hmm. and we went from there. But I was always like. Like, I always had a fear of, like, public speaking and all that because I have, like, a speech uh, disorder. Okay. So so I've always been, like, kind of cautious about that. And then, so it's funny, like, I uh, hate wearing suits and I hate public speaking, yet that's my job. <laughs> it's like, like I absolutely love it, you know? So it's like, it worked out. Oh, probably because it's, like, in the right environment about the game that you love yeah, so Yeah, yeah, of much. course. Like, uh, it's all about, like, everyone uh, just uh, shares a common... Interest, uh, yeah. I'll look like this or whatever, like over the game. Okay, so so you wouldn't do that for another game than Rocket League, then, would you? 
Uh, no, like at this point, I would. Like, I would be interested to do it in like other places. Like, I'm always interested in all video games. Okay. But obviously, Rocket League is that first love, you know. Okay, so you, when you went onto onto the desk role in the yeah. casting role, you initially you had you know this fear of you know talking, and you weren't sure you enjoyed it too much. How did that go? Like initially, did you hate it at first, but you kind of grown attached to it, or like? Was it better than you initially thought? So I thought it would be a lot of fun. Like, I was nervous about my speech and all that, but, mm -hmm. like, I thought it would be fun because, obviously, I like talking about Rock League. And plus, I had my YouTube stuff. So it's like I already knew that, like, I love talking about this game. Yeah. And I just wasn't sure how it would actually go. Okay. So uh, the first time was, like, I think everyone came out on, like, a Tuesday. But I had work, and I couldn't get out of work. So I showed up on, I believe, Thursday night uh, into Friday. So these guys all had more rehearsals. And then I come in, and that first day of rehearsals was kind of rough. I wasn't probably the best, but then once, like, I was on the desk, and, uh, like, I could say whatever I wanted. I, like, I kind of had fun with the first day, like, making fun of, like, Team Rocket and all that yeah. stuff. So just trying to have fun. And then, uh, but then after that, like, Golden Boy's like, yeah, the desk is perfect for you, and that's where you'll be. In. And I was super happy. And it seemed like the community liked it, so. Do you still have your current job, or, like, did you quit no, the no, full-time? No, no, no. Yeah. So I actually got laid off. It was, like... Mid June, like my job was slowly becoming obsolete. That's also why I had so much time during what, the day. What was it? Just uh, uh, so I was in like bookkeeping and accounting. Like I made okay. like a custom like labor hours worksheet for this okay. company that builds like giant uh, ice cream uh, machinery, okay. like the ones that you know create like a hundred popsicles in five minutes. You know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Things. Like the, the yeah. big, uh, big producers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I made like a custom like labor hours thing uh, for them. And okay. So I controlled that, but I had a lot of free time because because no one there knew anything. <laughs> so so i had a lot of free time and that's where i did a lot of my youtube stuff of just like like editing in thumbnails or just talking to the community and stuff like that so it kind of worked out the first season of rcs was pretty rough because i would uh literally like take fridays off i would take a red eye home sunday night and then i would go into work so i wouldn't even like sleep or anything like that so it was Ooh, pretty rough and then work okay. the whole week yeah so it so it was rough for the first like two months but like thankfully like, I got laid off. Like, I was planning on quitting after the baby uh, anyway. But that was okay. in August. So it wasn't that big of a deal. But, yeah. RLCS, you know, it's absolutely probably bigger than you probably expected going from SARB, right? I wonder. Oh, um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. How how was your, your initial, like, view of, like, what you thought Rocket League would be? You know, when it was announced and when, you know, you, you got... Because I'm, I'm sure you got into, like, the alpha or stuff like that. Um, I'm sure you were, like, involved at the very start how did what did you think would happen i'm curious to see like was it close to like what it is now or is it completely different so like i was always like when you talk about like a glass half full or half empty i'm always gonna side on the half empty side where i'm just like like i don't want to get my hopes up too much so i wasn't expecting anything like this because mm -hmm. i just didn't want to get my hopes up of just mm -hmm. like oh like i'd rather be surprised by this but yeah uh this has just blown up to something that I could never imagine like even the first like esls we were playing for no money there was like 200 yeah. like 200 teams signing up in a 3v3 and it was just absolutely insane because we used to like barely get like 16 players you touched on something that i think is very important in the current uh state of rocket league and it's that you used to play for like next to nothing just out of like sheer luck and you know there's been a, a bit of talk at the time of this recording about you know the scene and people having trouble trying to get into tournaments or like no incentive for like lower players in the sense of like just under rlrs right yeah just like that level of like people that are good but not quite good enough yet you know not uh not making it there i'm i'm curious of like what's your opinion on like those things because you you have a sp specific view of you know you were doing it already for like nothing so yeah. how how do you do you view this whole kind of quote unquote problem? Not really, rather the situation we're in. Like what what are your thoughts on that? So I feel like like I've seen a lot of people saying like oh we need another division or or something like that like below of the rival series and I yeah. don't necessarily like agree with that. Okay. Just because there is so many community tournaments that you can participate in. Sure, it's not for a lot of money, but that's not really the point. Like with, mm -hmm. uh, Rocket League's not handing out participation trophies like if you're not the best it makes sense that you're not making a lot of money mm -hmm. but if you want to get better the only way to do it is probably to just invest time and it sucks 
because you know it's a lot of time that needs to be invested and if yep. you're not a pro who can't do it full time mm -hmm. then yeah that's a major problem but that's just life like that's kind of where i was where i'm like well i can't do this full time so i bailed out yeah th there's yeah. always a chance like i would love if like sonic's got involved with some more community stuff but if they do then it's like well guys the the really good players are gonna come and and join those tournaments anyway you know so it's yeah. like and smack you yeah, that's one of the problems. Is like, well, you want more money in the scene, but the problem is, it's still going to be mostly the pros oh. like earning it all. Like, unless you ban yeah. those players from participating, but the problem is, then then you get no viewers, and then yeah. what's the incentive for Psionics to do to so? Worry about I I'd like to know both. You know, you, it can be two moments, but like a favorite esports moment as uh, either a caster or analyst, and another one, you know, as a player. I would like. I would be okay. interested in, in that, and maybe even a third one as a viewer, like completely just a fan that you might not even be involved in, but you just truly and really loved. I'm curious. All right, so viewership, I would definitely say that Justin goal that just happened. <laughs> we were basically just watching. I didn't care at all about analyzing this at all. Like I was watching as a fan. Like I was losing my voice uh, when that goal uh, <laughs> happened, and I didn't care at all because it was like this is amazing like that was like the pinnacle of rocket league like as a player it had to be like my last series like me sad and crow like all knew that the rlc pro league playoffs was going to be my last hurrah but no one else did at the time okay and that was when i played against crown and jewels that was pashi's team who wound up winning the whole thing mm -hmm. and uh that there was a game where i scored five goals which i've never done <laughs> in and uh like it was because we all started rotating a lot more so i was playing a lot more offense so that was definitely a cool way to end my career. Yeah, went out with a bang. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and that's then fantastic. Probably casting would probably be like, it's not necessarily during the event. Like, during the event is great, but right after that first day or that first weekend, knowing I could do it, plus the first world championship, was okay. just really, really cool. When you're, like, not feeling it, do you have, like, a tr like tricks to help you? Because, like, let's say if you need to, like, have a segment on the desk and you're just not not feeling uh, it or do you feel bad you have like tricks to help you deal not with it really like i just am really good at like all right like as soon as i put the headset on it's work mode okay like i know to like uh, even the first world championship like there was definitely nerves like man there's a lot of people here that, that are gonna watch me but as soon as i put the headset on it's like all right now it's game time it's exactly like the same show you know and all that mm -hmm. uh the worst was probably i think it was season three the world championship so i wasn't feeling good at all but uh we're doing uh the like shuttle across and I have my backpack on my stomach, and I'm like, Shogun, you should probably move, just in case. And as soon as I take my backpack off, I, like, immediately vomit in my mouth, and I'm holding Oof. it while everyone on the bus is frantically trying to find me a bag. And it's <laughs> miserable. Oh and then I threw up probably, like, five more times before oh. the show. Okay. And it was miserable. My throat was dying, but it was just like, you know what? All right, time for the show. <laughs> and as soon as I put the headset on, I'm like, I'm good to go. Like, my voice by the end of that day was kind of like I was losing it because of all the vomiting yeah the acid <laughs> but, like it's yeah. not good for the throat yeah exactly but it was just like oh time for a show so that's kind of how i am in like life i'm just like yeah. whatever like my <laughs> wife hates it because i'm way too laid back about everything yeah. oh so <laughs> uh she's like can you just care a little bit about stuff i'm like oh, <laughs> you go way back. i wonder uh do you have like a favorite mechanic in the game like something you you really feel like it give, gives you the, those goosebumps all the time uh I don't know about a favorite mechanic, but I love seeing like really good passing plays. Like the three man passing plays are always yeah. something I want to see more of. And they're so hard to pull off that like when we do get to see him, it's great to see. Because one, that that's also what I kind of was like known for, at least a little bit. Yeah. Was why I was like, like kind of good with Cosmic was I knew how to pass to Crone's head really well. It, uh, so it, it I just like seeing game that awareness, stuff. right? If I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah. And just knowing like when to pass and when not to. But yeah. like, so, so that's why players like Violent Panda, like I love watching because he's really good at it. Yeah. Stuff like that. So that's something I, I, you know, not everyone has one, but I really like knowing uh, if people, you know, if you have a weird habit that like people are like, you know, this is kind of weird games. Why are you doing this? But you just can't, <laughs> can't stop yourself. Uh, probably the weirdest habit is I will always want to constantly move. So I'll like shake my leg, uh, my leg in bed and all that stuff. And my wife hates it. She's like, why do you <laughs> have to constantly move all the time? Before Rocket League or maybe even now, like, do you have another favorite game that is just, you know, that people aren't aware of? So I used to play uh, like first person shooters pretty competitively back on like Xbox 360 and PS3. Okay. So I used to be like, not like a super 
a professional like MLG player, but me and, and some guys would join tournaments that are maybe on the smaller scale and we'd uh, win some money there. But that's also why it's so cool with Rocket League. There's a lot of like gamers from different backgrounds, but a lot of them come from some competitive element mm -hmm. in video games. So it's always neat to just see all these worlds like collide because it's a brand new genre. So it's just exactly like, that's what I was like. It can be say. anyone like it's not going to be the same Call of Duty pros for the past five years. You know, it's all new people, which is cool. An advice for people maybe want to hit on the other side of Rocket League and maybe, you know, want to get into casting or on the desk yeah. or uh, that kind of thing. Do you have, like, an advice for those people? Uh, the best thing to do for casting is, like, there is plenty of, like, community orgs, so definitely uh, try and start casting with them. There's always events, which kind of sucks because, like, you'll probably have to pay yourself to go out to them. But there's a lot of events in, like, Texas mm -hmm. where they do, like, actual lands that are smaller that like if you work through the like community orgs and then like you do pretty well there then you can like maybe ask a cj link or something like that to uh go uh, head out to one of those texas lands and try it like in person like don't get lazy with it like don't necessarily just like a cast for 40 hours like look at your cast and watch it again no one likes hearing their own voice but it's always good to go back and listen to yourself and figure out like all right like i keep saying fantastic a lot or something yeah so like i need to find a better word for that so it's not just the same thing over and over again yeah uh i still have those as well like i definitely say some words a lot but i'm always uh trying to improve and it's gonna be tough but like if you have some free time on the side at night just work with community orgs and uh hopefully you do well and just like show people like your work and maybe it'll work out i don't know oh i just want to shout out just like the rocket league community like for the most part, 99% uh, percent of the community is great. I mean, but it's hats off to the whole community of just being just a really good community uh, to be a part of. And I think I get a little lucky or maybe um, like I don't get cr uh, criticized a lot, which I like. But at the same time, guys, like if you don't like something from me, like feel free, like post mm -hmm. on Reddit. But like, I'll read it as long as it's like constructive and and I'll try and work on it. But. Uh, be nice to my fellow casters, because I know sometimes <laughs> they get a little... I agree. Uh, like, yeah, like some people get a little angry at them, but, you know, they're all trying to improve and they all have different styles. And you don't have to necessarily like every single person. It's just the way it is. We want to be diverse. Like, we don't want to have all the same exact format, because that's just <laughs> boring. So, be nice. Thank you so much for your time, Gibbs. I really appreciate that. No problem. And I'm just really happy that I actually won this hoops game. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, so that'll help out.